dedicated to the one who decides, right? Because they need to understand that the, the, the answer is not always outside. Then from there, we'll also with the one who will be working and, you know, and this is why the, the, the way we want to do it is not, okay, here, here's some French technology, just buy it, right? Hey, here's some French money, just invest in it, right? So this is absolutely not the way we want to do it, right? So, um, and there is one thing where I don't completely agree with you. There are so many Vietnamese people who know, went and studied abroad. Look at her. I know her. You've been, a, you've been abroad. You want to come back. So many, you know, there is a, a huge thing here. And this is where, I mean, I, this is why I want to work with her also, right? Is the yes, Vietnamese diaspora is huge. And even if we don't talk about the Vietnamese diaspora, at least we talk about the students and the young people that are going abroad and do not come back fast enough, right? So um, we need to work on a mentor, mentoring program uh, on the Vietnamese diaspora, right? To help them come back faster and invest really in their country. Sometimes, you know, I feel like I, I trust more the country than they, they do. And I'm so upset with them, yeah. you know? And I keep on fighting with them, say, hey, look at me, I'm only half Vietnamese. But you know what, I feel, I, I feel like there's so many things to do here. Come back, help me out, help us out, right? And um, I'm sure that, you know, in here there's also people who has been in there, do not dare yet to do things, their startup maybe, but still you're doing some, you know, you, 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 are, you are in the process of doing, right? And, you know, it's, it's also, in, you know, I, I believe in role model. What is lacking is not the people who know how to do it, it's the role model, right? Get the right people, the right, the one, get them do, and let us show them, right? They are the one who have to do it. So it's all about, this is why I'm always talking about empowering, right? I don't want to teach, I want to empower. I don't want to bring over people and I don't want to sell technology. I want to build and co-build, co-innovate. 
right? Because when you co-innovate and you co build and this is why I believe in open source, right? Because when you when you when you work um, in terms of technology only, right? Uh, because instead of buying out the best technology on earth, which is Microsoft, Oracle, whatever, no, invest in your local ecosystem, build your local ecosystem, believe in your cousin, in your in your sister, in your brother, right? C uh, believe in them first, right? So it's all about investing in education, but also empowering. I believe in this, right? So this is how you can help us. Empowering them. Empowering. In your school, there are people who are worth of course. becoming a role model. Work on that. And set them over here, and we will have them talk to the others. Right? This is just about empowering. It's not a question of, of people, we don't have the people here, we have all the people we need. And sometimes we just have to help them come back earlier here and invest. This is, this is what I'm very interested in, and this is why I'm working on this kind of stuff. Yeah. Thank you. So please help me. We have another question. <laughs> um, so I, I agree completely with what Selene was saying. Um, I, so my name's Scott. I've been building my own startup here for the past two years called Throw and Soul. Um, and really our mission right now is to uh, just change the image, right? Because when it comes to um, environmental stuff, which is actually the core of what we do, or when it comes to uh, entrepreneurial stuff, uh, the key to people doing it is realizing they can do it. Like as soon as you realize you have that power, you have it. Um, but right now it's kind of this era where creativity is largely a foreign image. People think of creativity, they think of all kinds of things going on in other places, but not what people here are doing here. Um, so that, that sparked my mind. I, I, I agree completely with what you're saying. That's the whole purpose of what we're doing right now, is to really make some huge national things happen so people all of a sudden look at Vietnamese people, and I, and I mean Vietnamese people and other countries look at Vietnamese people and think like, whoa, you know? That's that. This is a place where things happen now, um, and I think it's really kind of one of the best countries and best times in the whole world for that to happen right now. There's a lot of energy. Yeah. What's the name of your startup again? Throwing Soul. Throwing Soul. Okay. Remember it, everybody. Someone wants to react. This. I just want to bounce off of that. Um, technology isn't necessarily what you plug into the wall. And one of the things that I found, I grew up on a farm, and uh, there's no, no like hardware store, so you have to improvise all the time. You have to innovate all the time, just in your own space. And I see that a lot of Vietnamese, I see that in Vietnam, you, especially if you go into the rural area, you see so much upcycling, so much reusing, and so much technology that that isn't commercialized, just because people have to um, innovate because they don't have money to throw at the problem. They, they can't go to Home Depot or True Value and buy a, a complicated piece of equipment. They have to just sort it out or maybe live without. But it's just, I think there's a lot of, there's a culture of innovation here that's just deeply ingrained in, in society. And, and it, it's really exciting that we're beginning to work with the rural area. Um, one program, where we're working with uh, some provincial governments on bringing um, design thinking and, and lean startup that we're, we're simplifying it so that rural people can, can comprehend these concepts better. But I think, I agree, it's an exciting time. So, yeah, I was in Hawaii 10 years, 10 days ago, um, and I saw this incredible thing, you know, um, that was, they started nine months ago, uh, was one, one wheel, which is having the, the river, the perfume river in Hawaii more clean. Yeah, cleaner. So um, it started all with uh, with a woman. Uh, she's an incredible woman, by the way. But um, 
she asked her neighbors to say, okay, let's do something and try and start cleaning, right? So there were 10. They now are able to have more than 1,200 people involved. Nine months. This is incredible. I don't know when, I mean, I have been in Haiti like uh, one year ago, came back there and it's like, wow. Now, it's like probably one of the cleanest uh, cities I have ever been in Vietnam, I mean, right? So, you know, you have, a, you have an issue, so they did develop an app, right, with the city, actually. So they, they developed this app and said, okay, you have a problem, just say where it is and have people, not only the city, but actually it's also about the community. And you know what? When you have, when you're able to, to move as many people as that with there's no money involved. Just doing better. Just sustainability. Just because I care about where I live, right? But just because also the by this way, that by this mean, the uh, citizens do understand that is also fostering business, fostering economy, fostering tourism, etc. Right? So it, this is this is really like tech for good and community for good, right? And uh, just show show the people, you know, step by step, show them. And here there's just a, a huge, uh, I mean, a huge, a huge way to do it. And the community part is so big here, so big, right? And everybody's used to do stuff for the whole, the, the rest of the community. So, you know, we have here something. And I have one of my friends that is working on something like that where uh, you can value whatever, you, you're doing for, for, for the community, not in terms of money, but in terms of, okay, if you do, yeah, right? Like g getting minutes for your phone, getting, uh, getting you know, it's not, non, not money stuff, but just you do something good and at the end of the day, you get something good. <coughs> right. just, just to add on that, I, I think that's really good. Um, the community thing is it's a huge thing. Um, over, over, you know, in, in any place that we operate in, um, especially as a foreign uh, company operating in a local context. Um, I think we, we really need to look at our community, I mean, or rather we need to look at the community that is actually supporting us and, and actually sustaining us um, as a company. Um, and we need to see how we can best give back to the community, whether it's through training uh, the locals, whether it's through empowering the locals. Um, the reason why I say empowering the locals within your, your company itself is that I think um, the way I see it is that a lot of these, um, uh, a lot of companies, uh, with, um, maybe, maybe in particular foreign, um, foreign uh, corporates or foreign startups uh, that have actually built their, their, their business in, in, in Vietnam, um, they, they tend to, uh, or rather we tend to um, not, we tend to use, utilize the, the local technical knowledge here because it's great, right? Uh, everyone knows how to code, everyone's a good developer, um, it's relatively cheap. Um, and people and are makers also, as well. Yeah, yeah. Aaron was saying. Yeah. Um, but then after that, you know, there's no upside for them, there's no upward mo mobility for them. Right? We need to make it clear that there is upward mobility for them. There is a, a, a clear path to success for, for every one of them. Right? Um, and this is, as, as a, foreign, uh, a foreigner um, company in this local context, we do need to keep that in mind. We do need to actively try to promote that and actively try to um, inculcate that across um, you know, how we operate the business. And, Possibly to build that into the DNA of the of the local company, and um, uh, yeah, basically you know, giving back and recognizing that the community is as important as running our own business. So we 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 see uh, in, in local entrepreneurs, um, as we said, the, the, the local community is. Uh, they're all entrepreneurs, they're all makers, etc. You've said many things about education, uh, empowering, and environmental. environmental, the community. Aaron, you talked also about incentive. 
we have to insert it uh, the people. One question before uh, we start really the, the Q and A is what do you think, knowing all these uh, topics, education, incentive, etc. What do you think is going to be the next trend of sustainable startups in Vietnam on the foreigner point of view and on the local point of view? And then after everybody can ask questions. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not Vietnamese, remember? I have a half answer then. <laughs> okay, I'm in the middle, that's right. Okay. Um, 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 no, I think, you know, I, I think that, you know, it, I mean, globally, if we look at uh, sustainable, sustainability and startup in sustainable uh, fields, what I feel, because uh, I'm working in Europe, in Africa, in America, in Asia, uh, I see that all the real innovation will come from, not from Europe and not from uh, advanced countries, right? Um, I have seen incredible uh, innovation in um, Ivory Coast on sustainability, to working on recycle, recycle stuff, etc. And um, actually, um, I think that in Vietnam we should focus on the things that are really important for Vietnam. Agri-tech, right, blue-tech also. And not only about, so we, we have to care about the river, we have to care about um, the, um, the sea, we have to care about all, all, this, all this stuff because from here there is a real experience in terms of, um, I mean, the economy already existing in this and probably we have to leverage this, right? Instead of keeping uh, on trying to work only on, um, sorry for that, uh, on <laughs> Uh, financial innovation. We don't care about that here. But it's uh, a big trend. It's a big trend. But you know, it's like you have to, I mean, just like when you run a business, you have to know where is your strength. And strength of Vietnam is not, is, Vietnam is not a financial place. Come on. Right? Um, but uh, it's it's a, it's a place where you know uh, society inclusiveness is important. Community we have to, we have talked about this. Agriculture also is something very important. And I'm so worried. I don't want Vietnam to become another India. Uh, and I, and I will do whatever I can do. I mean, I work so much on this because. Vietnam has the power to develop its own economy specific and export outside Vietnam. So, um, yeah, where it's going to be, I don't know. How it's going to be is that we need, I mean, here we really need to, to build a different way to develop startups. Stop copying. Stop copying the US, stop copying the Europe, stop copying Singapore, sorry, because in ASEAN this is where the, all everything is, is done is done yet, right? Because but Vietnam will never be Singapore. No way, right? Um, so um, yeah, and, and education is very big also. So you know on ed tech probably there's a lot of things that can come from Vietnam also. And it's sustainability for me is not only about um, Sustain environment, yeah, it's, it's global sustainability. Yeah. But fintech can help also for inclusiveness, for inclusion. Yeah, but you know, is what are the best tracks? And ha now I only hear about fintech, and I say, man, it's not fintech. It's just fintech for fintech. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> fintech for something, yes, I agree. But fintech for fintech, will Sorry, uh, I don't. I don't feel like Vietnam is the right place to do that. This is my my thought. Okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so you're asking about trend, right? Yeah. I don't think there is a trend or not. I don't think there is there is a right trend or wrong trend or are you in the trend or not? Because the most important thing is we are still a developing country. 
Vietnam is still a developing country, and we, well, if we look at our neighbors, right, if we look at China, if we look at Singapore, if we look at um, Thailand, we're still a very developing country, and we still need, we still need more and more innovation solutions. So, um, I think, I think it should comes from the main, the, the, the issue of the country that, that everybody can see. The reason why we have more and more uh, education startup is because everyone here see that the education in Vietnam sucks. I can say that. Well, <laughs> everyone's in Vietnam, but. Um, and the reason why we see a lot of fintech solutions because the financial system in Vietnam not really develop at that stage, right? So I think there's no trend. But people want to see uh, because because the youngster right now they they, they can access to a lot of um, resources in the world. They can they can they can come on the internet. You guys can come on the internet and and find a lot of um, knowledge and skills and information. So that I think it it's gonna be more solution that solve the problem of the country and and if if we see that education is one of the problems then it's going to be you know more and more set up if we see that the environment is going to be a problem then you can see that people start caring more about zero waste and they start doing uh, green tech and you know agri tech and everything so yeah i don't think that there is a trend but I do believe that there is going to be more and more innovation solutions to you know, develop this country to be a better place for everyone to live in. And I believe it because there are more and more foreigners coming to Vietnam, invest to Vietnam, and, and believe that Vietnamese people can do something. Yeah. Would you be Is it okay if I add that? Um, <laughs> something I've noticed uh, as a really big place where this kind of next level of, of startup innovation is going to come from is not actually from new things coming in, but from making uh, connections between the entrepreneur community and the creative community. I think that's more of the big thing that's lacking right now. Um, but if you look at the Vietnamese brands that are becoming pretty successful, you take like Boo, you know, Basua, or Kong Cafe, uh, or Inco, some of these different brands, uh, they're taking artists, you know, Kong was started literally by an artist, uh, and it's the first Vietnamese coffee brand to now be opening up uh, locations in foreign countries. They have locations in South Korea now. Uh, you know, you, you look at Boo and they're, they're doing like whole new streetwear trends uh, and growing pretty rapidly um, across the country. And, and then you look at uh, who's doing the environmental things. It's, the, it's, it's a lot of those same companies. You know, look at Ginkgo, look at uh, Basua. They're putting solar panels on their buildings. They're using organic cotton. They're giving reusable bags. So I don't, I don't really think there's much there, there's not many new things you need. It's really just about bridging what's already here. I think everything is here already. Um, and when it comes to Vietnam being a developing country, I think you guys are in a really good spot. You know, like I would say, in many ways, America is much less developed because at least people here can uh, access each other. You know, uh, so so, so it's, a, it's a really good time and a really good environment. So do you agree? What do you think? Uh, yeah, no, I was just, uh, I was just uh, thinking of a point um, about this uh, whole, um, you know, funding and uh, you know, um, uh, lots of foreign investment coming into Vietnam, um, and and then tying that to the sustainability part of, you know, because sustainability is also about the efficient efficient use of resources, right? Be it money be it manpower, be it anything, right? Um, so I just, you know, I don't know, I just wanted to get your, view, your, your views as well. Uh, you know, is the availability of this cheap money, right? Um, or free money, for that matter. Um, um, making people, or rather, um, allowing 
corporates or allowing startups to become wasteful, you know, in terms of the way that they are that they are um, executing their ideas or projects or you know or, or you know whatever they're trying to do, right? Because um, the reason why I brought this up was because um, there was uh, I think a couple of years back uh, I invested in ICO. Um, in, 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 in Vietnam, um, and uh, when the when the ICO closed, uh, I someone uh, someone told me that oh the startup founders went went and bought like ten Mercedes Benz and a few houses. Um, it was a thirty million dollar race. So you know it's it's cheap money, it's easy money. Where we we were we were putting in a you know couple hundred dollars for a punt, right? Um, but then to to them it becomes a really you know cheap, easy way of uh, raising money, so, and not effect, not having to effectively use the money. Is that, you know, what, what do you guys think? Uh, so that's uh, more of a question on the education, on the mindset of local entrepreneurs? Uh, not necessarily, but also, I guess it's, um, you know, for us, we are also trying to think, how else can we, because this, this uh, VC mentality, uh, um, from from a few years ago, um, is that you know they would they would go out there, invest in a hundred companies and hope that one succeeds, right? One becomes a unicorn and they make the money there, they're happy, and they don't really they don't really care about the rest of the ninety nine, right? So how do we then, um, as as a accelerator or as a as a venture fund, how do we then change that model to try and um, improve the outcome or or drive a more sustainable outcome? From, from this? Depending on your KPIs you put on them. Um, you know, um, I. Th there's two things I think. Um, I believe in uh, self education, right? Um, you cannot, you know, if you look five, ten years back here, there is just nothing. Right, so who could dare blaming, you know, uh, companies now, you know, to do startups, which just like just take the money and just do whatever they want, right? So it's, it's a question, you know, of self kind of education. Um, and, and I think, you know, there's only time that can also that can help some of that um, and probably um, getting the, uh, getting foreigners um, uh, to talk about this because there's no, um, uh, track record of this here, but the second thing is that you know, and, and this is something that where I'm I'm, I'm very um, well. We we need also to uh, create Vietnamese funds, Vietnamese VCs, right? And you know, um, it has to be really Vietnamese chapters because uh, or real Vietnamese companies funds, right? Uh, because I think that run by Vietnamese and through with Vietnamese culture also because um, the way that you know we were raised or I were raised outside outside Vietnam both in France and the US is just so different from you know the family owned business uh, culture that we can have here and you know it's like the uh, the way the way that the other business are running I mean, the money comes always from family or co-family, and I think you know that in the in the way even in the, there should be more VC community with VCs, right? And you know integrate or foster uh, community VCs because um, in the in the mind and the culture Vietnamese doing things for people uh, is a little bit different than just you know um, just funds and easy money. So um, I think this will takes time. Uh, it needs time because in all the other countries, it also took time. But I think that we could probably go faster here, including more. Uh, there are still too many, as you said, too many uh, foreigners in the VC. So the KPIs that you bring, that you give, or that these funds give, is only about um, it's money driven. So how? Can you, right? 
Um, so um, yeah, and in education on startup, you know, um, um, entrepreneur school. school. Entrepreneur. <laughs> You cannot do it on your own, but you know we have to create also the tracks inside universities or schools, you know, that uh, talk about entrepreneurship. So far, there's not much. So the only way uh, you hear about this is by coming in workshops, etc. But this is something that you have to do. You have to want it, right? Um, so I think you know it's also so some some stuff that we, we need to work on. Uh, I think. But you know, um, you know, um, we have been the, my company, the Nagora. We have been there for 20 years, and uh, everybody. Each time we see a VC, the first question because we give out 100% of the innovation we are building. Everything that we are producing is 100% open source, right? So the first thing that the VC is asking us: What? Close the source. Come on, sell out licenses. Okay, and actually what we, what we do and explain to them, no, we want to work on a sustainable way. We believe that if we do good innovation, then there will be even much more people coming to us and want to work with us to co-create innovation together, you know? Um, third thing is that, oh, uh, how, how much marching are you doing? I said, I don't care. This is not my point. I said, how much, uh, how am I able to have the community grow? So you want criteria? I can give you hundreds of them, right? Because, I mean, you know, we, we are doing stuff very differently from others, right? In terms of software, etc. You know, and uh, it takes time, and also for us, no, we are in the other way, right? 20 years, family business, family money, always have grown the company, right? But each time we go to a VC, they say, no, oh, change the model, it's not good. Make it more, make it more uh, financial, in a more financial way. I don't want to do that. I want to give back to the community. Yeah. Thank you. So we're actually running out of time, so uh, I think we should uh, do some uh, Q&A. And also, we're going on like, different topics, smart money, investment, etc. All those topics will be covered at Hanoi Innovation Summit. <laughs> so we welcome you there. Uh, anyone uh, for some questions? We have some questions from the ladies in front. Here, so I could see everyone. Um, I got something that I would like to share, and also have your point of view uh, on that. Mm. Well, we talk about smart technology, smart city, and I was asking, what about smart people? Um, because technology is created by human, and it's used by human. A pen is a simple technology, but depending on the person who uses it, a pen could be used to kill. And a pen could be used to write beautiful things to inspire the world. Um, we're talking about sustainability. Then for me, we could be doing things still making a, doing a lot of effort, a lot of energy. If we are doing something that we believe in, that in fact is our own expression, is respecting our own integrity. We can force ourselves to do something that people ask us to do. For example, do with financial things, right? But if in fact we do not want to do it, okay, we could force ourselves to do it in short time, but long term, 
maybe then we would ask ourselves, well, who am I? So sustainability is, in fact, for me first, asking ourselves, who am I? Who we are as a company, as a startup? For what really we work for? And in fact, the product we put in the market, it's our creation, it's our own expression. And if we understand why we're doing that, we could put a lot of creation there. But never forget that those creation is myself, is our company, is who we are. And we could change, of course, but always asking and connecting with our values, our identity. So, um, I am Vietnamese, I'm from Hanoi, uh, I was born in Hanoi and grew up until 16 years old. Then I earned a scholarship to uh, go to France and finish high school and so for now 17 years in uh, living in France. And, well, with a Vietnamese education system, I've never thought about who I am, about daring of thinking to expressing myself, my own needs. And when I went to France, I saw another system. And then I realized that what I did until now is just to respect what the society expects from me. And then now I decide to do really what I do. And I decide to stop um, working and only playing, doing things that make me pleasure, give me pleasure and earning money. That's the bonus. And so I realized that, in fact, you, you say that, okay, or, and I, I heard that, okay, Vietnamese people, they, there's um, not a lot of entrepreneurs yet. And because if entrepreneur, being entrepreneur is to be expressing ourselves, then for me it makes sense because we do not know really how, and we don't even dare to express ourselves. I learned that abroad. And so that's why I'm, I'm being a coach. And I make a, a program, coaching program for Vietnamese people in Paris. And I just what, I was stunned because I saw how they was um, able to evolve very quickly. As long as we put a system, an ecosystem, a place where they could experiment themselves and experiment how is really expressing ourselves, they understand very quickly. Even more quickly from the French people in my program. And I was like, wow. And that makes me want really to do something with Vietnamese people because I believe in our own potential to do something real. But the, the first thing is the basics. Express yourselves and dare to listen to yourself. Thanks for uh, giving us the point of view. So, no, no question, but uh, really we see the trend of tonight is, thank you very much, uh, a big focus on education, so I think it's an answer for, for the question I, I asked uh, before. Any other uh, question? We don't have much time, so no more pitch. <laughs> but it was very, very interesting. Uh, hello, uh, I'm a student, and uh, I have a question about the only student here. <laughs> Any other students? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> uh, well, I think um, it's not about the problem that Vietnam do not have, does not have um, like uh, the, the workforce that, uh, that could enter the sustainability. I think that I have engaged in the community that many like change make, not very young. They, they have the uh, inspiration, they have the energy. But I think the point is now, like, the impact and uh, the sex is not really, like, um, influential and, uh, like, to engage and influence more people. Because, like, in my school, um, there's a group of students who cares about sustainability, but not really engaged, like, the whole school. And we're still struggling in the ways that how to impact people. And I think like um, we want to have like a community that uh, that some people, that the experts, the mentors, who show us the way how to influence others. 
and also like in a more uh, systematic way that we could be the uh, how to say the influencer. So um, that is my right point to be that like, there's they are people who cares about the sustainability, but the impacts is not are not good and are not broad enough. And we want to have like an ecosystem like you have to say. And also about the entrepreneur in study. In my school, I just finished my freshman. Uh, we have the, uh, the models about entrepreneurship. We have to create a business plan and uh, everything. Like, although it's very naive and quite like over positive, <laughs> but uh, we, we do think that um, we have the intention about sustainability, but we need more power. <laughs> So this is kind of an invitation of activities to revise. Which school are you? I mean, British University. British University. Can I give you some advice? Sure. So I, I spent my whole career in advertising, and we think very deeply and very hard on how to convince people to buy things that they don't need. Um, but the principles that are used in marketing communications are universal, and you can use them to influence anyone to do anything, whether it's smoking or drinking or being green, it's the same principle. So uh, the inventor of modern um, public communications is Edward Bernays, and you can read his book. He wrote it in the 1920s, and the title is Influencing Public Opinion. And if you read the book, then you have the, the, uh, the practice for how to do what you want to do. Thank you. It's not very fun to read it, but you can influence people's opinions if you master the skill. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Any other questions? Yes. I have two, and I'll keep them short, but cut me off after one if we need. Um, so, with uh, like current environmental situation, uh, you know, IPCC, which is a moderate estimate of the situation we're in, giving us about 10 years left to avoid a path to global catastrophe. Uh, and Aaron, you're focusing on a lot of directly environmental things. Um, like, do you, do you see anything? Is there anything in the pipeline, anything you know about that is trying to address issues uh, touching Vietnam or in Vietnam on that scale in that timeline? Yeah, there, there's a, a, a growing movement um, around this concept of the circular economy. And, um, and now even governments are beginning to um, address it, but really it's a group of corporations that chose, um, they realized that sur their survival as a corporation is contingent on there being people to buy their products and services and therefore <laughs> maybe we need to think about this in a much bigger way. And so the circular economy is differentiated from the linear, linear economy whereby we take a resource, use it, and throw it away. Um, the circular economy is now being adopted by some big corporations. Um, I can't remember the names, but there are big names that you would recognize. And these corporations are now deciding that now we must, if we make, let's say, this phone, every piece in the phone has to not end up in a, no piece of this phone can end up in a landfill. And it has to be engineered from the very beginning to go into the next product, the next product, the next product, so that nothing is ever wasted. Uh, it's, a, it's a big idea, and there's some really um, interesting people working on it. I went to a, a seminar on the topic in, in Hong Kong a while back, uh, which, which is led by the bank in Tessa, San Paolo. It's an Italian bank, and they have a whole, a whole like, center uh, focusing on, on promoting the circular economy, so you might want to look into that. I uh, just want to add in something. Um, so I just done a workshop uh, last weekend for uh, 50 uh, students and young entrepreneurs uh, about zero waste. And uh, we do talk about circular economy and on, on, on that workshop. 
And what I can see is um, there are more and more startups care about circular economy. Um, if, if you care about the environmental, you can actually go down to the, to the field and talk to those startups. They are just very simple startup. I, I, don't, I don't know how to call them a startup or entrepreneur or something, but they are just farmer, for example. And they, they innovate how they, they innovate how they do their farming and everything. Um, and that way, of like how to say, uh, by that way, they are actually doing circular economy. And the, that, that's the first thing. The second thing is the corporate is actually the corporation. They actually care about circular economy now. For example, Unilever. I have a friend in Unilever, and they are actually doing so many things in like with like inside the company to make it more friendly, eco-friendly, and, and make sure that every single product that they provide to the market, they're gonna do circular economy and bring them back to their uh, manufacturing and, you know, recycling it. And another one is, uh, if you care about that, you can actually come to, um, you reach out the like, different organization in Vietnam who care about the environmental and supporting the uh, ideas uh, to make the environmental more friendly, like uh, CCIP in Vietnam, do you know that? CCIP and seed planter, and uh, VCCI actually having different programs within VCCI to, you know, uh, supporting the ecosystem. So I think that actually there are movements, and actually it's it's growing. The point is when when it's gonna hit the you know the the stage that we will not talk about it very negatively like, like right now. So, so then, yeah, I, uh, I, I agree with that, all, all that, and that kind of goes into my second point. Because um, there are, like I said, I've been building an environmental startup here for two years, so I know a lot of that ecosystem. Um, and I think it's going to need a lot of people doing things on small scales, plus a few people making, like, really big disruption. Um, and all of that, and, and, and the small scale stuff is really happening. And I think that goes back to the point, the question you asked earlier, uh, Harvey, where, you know, what are, you know, the investing in the coin offering and then having that go to buy Mercedes. Um, and I think that comes on two things. One is consumerism, and it's like, all right, you know, how do we address that? And I don't think we're gonna cover that in the panel right now. Um, but the other is, the idea of what is a startup, what is an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm sorry, I forget your name in the flat and red, but you kind of laid that out perfectly right in front of me. Um, I think that that a lot of the types of investment that are coming in are investment in like classic images of, of what a startup should be. Um, and that's a separate thing from what Vietnam is. Uh, and if you go back and see um, some of like these smaller things that are happening all over the ground, like what are people? What's the most common thing people are doing uh, when it comes to sustainability, environmental sustainability? Uh, a, a big two of them are shops and markets, and of course, you know. Um, so I. I think that's a that's like a big piece of the puzzle. There's like how if you want if we want to, you know I don't know if it be a coin or something else, but if we want to invest in something happening here, how is it relevant to what's already happening here? You know, um, and and I think the last part of that is something we touched on uh, much earlier, which is the that whole um, creativity is a foreign image thing. You know, like of, of course people are buying a Mercedes because that's this kind of long-standing iconic image of, oh, you get here, you get a car, specifically you're getting a car, that's a big change. Um, and so, you know, if, if there's something to also make that shift, so what people want in Vietnam is what people are doing in Vietnam, that's the image that will be stri strived for. Uh, you know, there's a lot of nuance to it, but I, but I think that's, uh, 
I don't know, tying together all that. Thank you. Very interesting uh, what you just said. Thank you, everybody, uh, for your time, for sharing. Thank you, uh, all of you, for participating and pitching those uh, great uh, innovative events in, uh, in the beginning. Uh, as uh, So it's going to be the end of, uh, of this event. So there's going to be some drinks, uh, some beers who are in the freezer uh, in order to network and to continue uh, this uh, great discussion. Uh, we have some uh, gifts, not that sustainable, but a little bit, for our guests. <laughs> And uh, so thank you. So you probably also uh, on your chairs you have an invitation to come to the press conference uh, where we'll be really uh, announcing uh, our sponsors, the Hanoi People Community. Also, we we'll talk about uh, their involvement in the, in the event and uh, Dassault System, Microsoft. Uh, we'll discuss on how they want to interact with the, with the local ecosystem. So I will see you on Tuesday, but see you on the 29th and 30th of August to innovate for inclusion and sustainability in this emerging economy. Thank you everybody. We get to